Good day, we'll discuss the term one passive in 2023, section eight. A string with a mass length has a tension, which quantity has the same dimension as square root of TL over M. So this is about the dimension analysis and we shall review each of the variables. So the mass M has the dimension M, length L as L, and the tension T, if you couldn't remember, it is also a force and you can at least remember the unit which is also reflected as the dimension. So for force, it is equal to MA. So the unit should be kilogram meter per second square. So kilogram is mass and then meter per second square, L per T square. So put in all those dimensions and simplify the expression, you should be able to obtain L per T, which is the meter per second, the velocity. So answer should be B in this question. We move on to question number two. The motion of two cars P and Q on the straight road are shown in the graph. So which statement is not true about the motion of both cars? A. Q overtakes P at R. So this is displacement against the time. So after point R, we could see that P is in front of Q. So it should be P overtakes Q at R. So answer is A. Lah. B. Okay, Q moves slower than P. So either move slower or faster, we can check the gradient of the graph. So Q has lower value of gradient, so it is indeed that Q moves slower than P. And then Q and P start simultaneously, yes, okay, because uh, at both time at the time zero, both the cars start moving. And for answer D, Q and P stop simultaneously. So for this answer, actually, I think it is an unknown because both P and Q are actually still moving okay, after this time but we do not know about the motion of the car. So either the car is moving or stopped, we can actually look at the value of the displacement. So the car is stopped when the line is a horizontal line and it is moving, it is going up or down. So we move on to question number three. A particle hits a wall perpendicularly at speed u. Which statement is true if it is a, an elastic collision? So you need to review back the definition about the elastic collision where we have the formula of M1U1 plus M2U2 equal to M1V1 plus M2V2. So for elastic collision, we have the total momentum and kinetic energy conserved. And as for this case, actually there is some gray area actually because uh, when we talk about the, the ideal equations, okay, we have the M1V1 plus M2V2. But the wall, okay, it has a larger mass compared to the particle. So we said that the wall has a larger mass compared to the particle. So actually the final velocity of the wall is almost zero. So the final velocity of the particle should be the same as its initial velocity. So the answer, I believe it should be A. Okay, the particle returns along its original path with speed u, while the total momentum and total kinetic energy are conserved. We move on to question number four. A troll is released on a track at P and moves through R as shown in the diagram. If the height at P and R are 1.2 and 0 0.9 respectively, what is the speed of the trolley at R? So we shall apply the principle of energy of conservation. So where we have the P at the height of 1.2 moves to R, so we have a change in potential energy, which is converted to the kinetic energy. So just apply the formula mg delta h equal to half mv square. So we have the change in height is from 1.2 to 0 0.9. So the change in height is 0 0.3. And g we have 9.81. So just cancel the m here and just apply this formula. And you should be able to obtain the velocity is 2.43, which is answer A. We move on to question number five. A small object is placed at different position on the horizontal disk which rotates at constant angular velocity. When the distance of the object is r from the center of the disk, the linear speed is v, centripetal acceleration is a. So which position of the object correspond correctly to the linear speed and centripetal acceleration? So this question is actually talking about the relationship between the r and v and also a. So it is given that when the distance is r, the linear speed is V, acceleration, centripetal acceleration is A. So if we refer to the formula of the linear speed V equal to R omega, and also the centripetal acceleration R omega squared. So we can see that V and A is directly proportional to R. 
So if we refer to the answer, there are two types of cases where the first A and B, the R is half. And for C and D, the R is double. So when R is half, B should be half, A should be half also. And when R is double, B is double, A is also double, okay? Because they are directly proportional. So the answer should be D where we have two R is two B and two A. So we move on to question six. An object of mass 200 G is tied up to one end of string and the object is whirled around a circle on a smooth horizontal surface as shown in the diagram. The tension in the string is 2.4 Newton, velocity is 1.2 meter per second. If the circular path from P to Q is 0 0.15 meter, what is the angular displacement of the object? So first of all, to solve this question, we need to obtain the radius of the circular path. So based on what we have learned that the tension is the centripetal force, to provide, okay, the, to provide the circular motion. So we have the tension is equal to mv squared over r, and using this equation, we can obtain the radius of the circular path. So the tension 2.4 mass 0 0.2 kg, v is 1.2 given as here, and then uh, here is the way we can get the r, 0 0.12 meter. So after this, you can just apply the formula of S equal to R theta to obtain the radian, okay, which is the angular displacement. And the answer should be C, okay, 1.25 radian, which is uh, almost to 1.3 radian. We move on to question seven. The ratio of the change in gravitational potential energy with the height above the surface of a planet of a body of mass 2 kg is shown in the graph. So what is the acceleration due to gravity at the surface of the planet? So you need to review back each of the equation learned in this chapter. The G can be linked to U okay, through the dvdr. Okay, the G is the dvdr which we learned in the chapter. Okay, you also can refer to my slide which I have discussed roughly about the relation between each of the variable. Okay, so G is equal to dvdr where V is U over M. So we can put in the formula, we get G is one over M, du dr, and the du dr is the gradient of the graph. So this is how you can get the relationship to obtain the G. So put in the values where M is two kg, and then the gradient of the graph, okay, you can, I think you can, you know how to calculate it. And the answer here should be five meter per second square. Answer is eight. So we move on to the next question. Satellite moves around the earth in a circular orbit which is correct about the satellite. So the satellite should be in a uniform circular motion where we have the magnitude of the velocity. Okay, the speed is constant. Second, kinetic energy varies, okay, which is also wrong. Okay, since our speed is constant, kinetic energy, which is also the scalar quantity, should be also constant. And next, linear momentum varies, okay, is correct. Okay, linear momentum is a vector quantity. So since the direction of the motion is keep changing, so it is yes that the linear momentum varies. And the last one, angular velocity varies, which is certainly wrong. So now we move on to question nine. So I believe this should be a bonus question if you really understand about the forces. A man stands on the light ladder, which is placed on a rough floor and leans again on a rough wall. So rough means that there is friction force. So a rough flow should give you a friction force in the horizontal component and a rough wall should give you the uh, friction force in the vertical component. And then the vertical forces and the horizontal forces here is the reaction force acted on the ladder. And last one is the, the mass of the man and also the ladder. So the answer here is B. So move on to question 10. Variation of stress with strength of a wire is shown in the graph. So what is the area under the graph? It, it should be also easy since it is in the slippers. So answer is strength energy per unit volume of the wire. So you can also revise how we can do the derivation to prove that the area under the graph is the strength energy per unit volume. We move on to question 11. Average transactional kinetic energy of an oxygen molecule is this. What is the temperature of the oxygen gas? So we learn about the average translational kinetic energy is given as F over 2 kT. And since it is an oxygen molecule, it is a diatomic molecule that the degree of freedom is equal to five. 
So the boss main constant is given in the question paper. So just put in all those values, you should be able to obtain the temperature is 91.3 Kelvin. Answer is C. We move on to question 12. The curve of molecular speed distribution of a gas is shown in the graph. Which action would cause the change of the curve from P to Q? So from P to Q, we can see that the speed of the gas is reduced. Okay, either the peak, uh, the average speed or the root mean square speed, it is reduced. So it means that the temperature is reduced. And as for answer C and D, we could see that they mentioned about molecules which is leaving the container. So the number of molecule is represented by the area under the ground. So there's no statement about the area. So we can just assume that the area stay constant. The number of molecule is also constant. So answer would be B. We move on to question 13. A cross cylinder which contains one more of gas molecule is heated from 27 to 177 degrees Celsius at constant pressure. What is the work done by the gas to increase the volume of the gas? So what done is P delta V, which is also equal to NR delta T. So we have the number of more as one more, uh, the gas constant at 0.31 and the change in temperature, 177 minus 27. So the answer here is B, okay, which is almost 1,250 Joule. We move on to question 14. A monoatomic ideal gas is initially at a pressure 1.5 times to the power 4 pascal and a volume 0.09 meter cube. The gas is compressed air diabetically to 0.04 meter cube. What is the final pressure? So you learn about this, uh, where we have the air diabetic is referred to the equation of PV to the power of gamma is a constant. So before that, the gamma, which is the ratio of the molar heat ratio, heat constant where we have the formula as f plus 2 over f so don't forget about the formula and here it mentioned that it is a monoatomic so f is equal to 3 so the gamma okay the ratio is 1.67 so apply the ratio formula that we have the pv to the power of gamma so do the calculation and you should able to obtain the pressure is 5.81 times 10 to about 4 pascal answer is d moving to the last question Two well insulated metal rod X and Y with an equal cross sectional area joint end to end as shown in the diagram. Both ends are maintained at 100 and 0 degrees Celsius at steady state, which graph represents the variation of temperature with distance along the rod. So I think this is also a bonus because uh, we could see the answer A, B, and D are quite strange. Okay, the one we have learned that it should be a constant. Okay, at steady state that the object should have a constant temperature gradient. So answer would be C in this case. So to summarize all the answer, here is it. Uh, so they are all the suggested answer by me. So if you disagree or you think there should be another correct answer for any of the question, you are welcome to leave it in the comment section below for further discussion. So that's all for this video. Thank you.